for the Lexington Community Center. Uh, what a great place to uh, have in the community. Um, I know I've been here to meetings on a lot of occasions, and we want to thank um, our hosts from the community center. So uh, thank you very much. Um, pretty much everybody, we, we've had a full house. In fact, the, the response to this shooting seminar, you know, this active shooter seminar, was so great that we actually had to add a second program at 2 o'clock. So. Um, it is kind of full here, but um, we're glad you guys made it, uh, and we're glad you're here. Uh, my name is Jim Shaw. I'm the publisher of the Lexington Colonial Times magazine. I'm also the chair of the board of the Lexington Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Lexington Chamber has committed itself um, over the last couple of years to sort of do and host more programs that affect the greater community, um, not just the business community. And as you can see, this is one of those programs. Um, Cleve and, um, and Charlie or Char Charles. Uh, Charlie's fine. Charlie. <laughs> that works. I've been called worse. I could go with Charlie. Yes. When I introduce Charlie our works. That's nice. When our executive director talks, she'll talk a little, a little more about them. But they're members of the Lexington and Chamber and um, a, a recent award recipient, too, for the Chamber. And um, two folks that I've known for 20 years or more. So um, these are highly qualified people to talk on this topic. I'm sorry that part of the inspiration for such a great turnout was what happened recently in Parkland, Florida. I know it's sort of on the forefront of everybody's mind, so uh, at any rate, um, if you have any questions about the Chamber or future programs, Melina is available and she'll tell you how to reach her. So again, I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank the Community Center. I want to thank Charlie and Cleve, and I want to thank Lex Media for being here to cover it too. So just so you know, Lex Media is uh, it's taken. So without further ado, I want to introduce Melina Richards, who is our Executive Director of the Lexington Chamber of Commerce. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I know that some of you received some phone calls from me, a little panicked because we couldn't accommodate everybody. But guess what? There's a second session. Thank you, Christine, for that. Um, I wanted to point out a couple of things. There is a piece of paper um, somewhere in that packet that has all of our upcoming events. As Jim mentioned, we do a lot for the business community, but we're also trying to do a lot more for Lexington as a whole and even outside of Lexington. But um, I know that it seems crazy that we have this active shooter event that we scheduled it right after Parkland. We did not. We actually have been working on this for about a year. We discussed having executive combined martial arts and executive protection program um, do something and we decided active shooter seminar last year. It was only about two months ago that we decided on the date and then unfortunately you know everybody knows what happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I want to let you guys know that combined martial arts and executive protection program is not just about active shooter. There are, there are many situations they teach situational awareness and we're here today to actually help you understand what they do as well as how to keep yourself safe um, when the, hopefully the time never comes but if ever you find yourself in a situation they will be there to answer your questions prior to the situation um, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew who they were Charlie is a 30 plus year in law enforcement um, officer I can't call him retired because he's so old. <laughs> so that's what he that's told me it. not to say. That's it. Um, he's also the owner of Combined Martial Arts and a six degree black belt. He will tell you a little bit more about himself um, when we get started. Cleve is a retired state trooper. He does not feel old when I say that. He actually <laughs> likes that. Because um, he is old. <laughs> old and young. He is. Um, He's a retired state trooper. He also did detail for executive protection detail for Governor Duvall here in Massachusetts and President Obama. So these two are very informative in what they're doing. They're skilled, they're trained, and they're great to talk to about any problem. So um, please reach out to them. They have all their contact information right here. They do have a class that they're starting next month, so get the information from them. And I hope you enjoy this program and spread the word that the Chamber is doing this for the community. Thank right. you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Melina. Of um, I'd like to also thank Jim Shaw, chairperson of Lexington Chamber of Commerce. <coughs> um, again, just to echo a little bit what Melina said, we did start this program, discuss, start discussing it to be here today last year. 
So we're happy to be here to present this uh, seminar on active shooter and a little bit about myself. Uh, Chief Instructor at Combined Martial Arts, which I established back in 1998. And we do all of various types of situation awareness programs through the school. And what we do, our situation awareness program and defense tactics programs basically emphasizes on teaching defensive techniques to use um, to help people keep people safe. If in if you end up in a situation where you feel the need to protect yourself. Unfortunately, today we have to think about self-defense a lot and being aware of our surroundings. So we, the program also enhances your alertness so you're more aware around your surroundings. And we do this by video discussion, educating, like keeping it in uh, educational format. And then we do some hands-on techniques. That's, this is just one part of the program um, that we normally discuss. Active shooter is only part, part of it. We recommend a program that at minimum six hours. Our, pro, our classes run a six hour program. Normally two hours a night, come back three. But we do tailor our programs to our clients. When we go into businesses, whatever their concerns are, that's what we highlight. We meet and discuss first what the concern is for the company, and, and we try to make the workplace safe. And we always start at six hour minimum, and sometimes we do eight hour programs. So thank you for being here. Uh, I want to introduce my partner, Cleve Coates, and he'll say a little bit more, so we might be here till midnight, but <laughs> I'll have him introduce himself, and we'll move along. But thank you again for being here and having combined my shots here, and thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be brief because we have our, you have our resumes right here. Uh, things, uh, things we've done over the years. I'm a retired sergeant from the state police. I spent tw uh, 32 years on the state police. Uh, the first part of my career, part of the fun part of my career, was on tactical operations in the K-9 unit. I was on the special response team, um, SWAT team instructor. And a lot of the bad situations that happened in Massachusetts or in the neighboring um, um, states, I responded to, um, to, to those. Um, I was also a command post manager. I uh, was involved with the Boston Marathon uh, as a command, most command post manager, um, delegating people to um, different areas in the area there, around there. I had the opportunity, um, after I made sergeant, actually I made sergeant while I was on tactical operations, so that's why I stayed for so long, because I was basically indebted to them, because they, were, they took very good care of me. Mm -hmm. I was on the governor's protection detail after that for Governor Val Patrick. I came under the end of Governor Romney's term. So we traveled basically all over the world. This, he has a protection detail with him all the time. So I've traveled some really good places, some really interesting places, overseas to China, um, to France, to Paris. We were in Paris before the terrorist attacks that happened in, in, over in Paris. And um, involved with the presidential details. When the president comes to town, uh, state police are heavily involved with that. As a supervisor, is involved with the Secret Service agents doing advanced uh, um, threat and risk assessments for the president and also traveling in the motorcade uh, with, the, uh, with the agents there. Um, towards the end of my career, I was on the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. Actually came in after the Boston Marathon bombings. I was with, with the governor during the bombing, when the bombings took place. So we inve I investigated international and domestic terrorism and also organi organized crime there. And also set up protocols as far as the future um, Boston Marathons and conducted um, surveillance operations for that. And basically, after the marathon, our biggest event was really the 4th of July pop, so we were heavily involved with that on the Esplanade in Boston. Thank you. Um, so you can see that the wealth of knowledge and experience that we have that makes us a little different than anyone else. And we tailor our programs to whatever the client's concerns are. That's the main point we do. So today's discussions is going to be on actor shooter. So I'll give you a brief discuss, um, description of actor shooter. Act, an actor shooter, just for definition, is, any, is an in individual actively engaged in killing someone or trying to kill someone. They're actively doing it. And most of the time they're in a confined area or populated area and there's usually not a pattern of victims. It's just happens, unfortunately, a mindset to be professional is a little off, right? So 
Unfortunately, it's happening more and more, and there was 18 after shooters since January 1st, and we're only at end of um, February. So in my mind, that's too many. So we're going to educate and try to help people stay safe if, if after shooter incident happens in the vicinity that you are. So that's what we're here for today. But um, we're going to start we're off. Gonna start, we're going to start off with a video. Lights or? Today we're at a shopping mall. Situational awareness walking in. Scan. Look for places that might give you more security should something happen. Hide behind a pillar. There's one. Look underneath the benches to see if there's any bags or anything that looks suspicious that's been left there. Look in some of the trees. Look at the fountain. The fountain's a good place to hide if somebody starts shooting. You may have to hold your head underwater for a few seconds, but it's safe. Look at everywhere. You're with your family. I understand. Check places out. You don't have to make them paranoid, and this is not being you paranoid. This is you trying to make sure that you can provide the safety that your family will need should anything go wrong. Come into the mall, you're looking around, you're doing a general scan all the way out there in the distance and you start focusing on some stores that have some open storefronts, you come to a map. The good thing with the map is you can find out where you are, know where you are, and know where other things are, like stairways, escalators, bathrooms, restrooms, fountains, other areas. Look behind you. After you've come in and looked at the map, Check and see if somebody's following you. Again, look in the open storefronts. They're a good place for people to hide. They don't have any glass or doorways in front of them, and they provide an easy exit to come out and do damage to a lot of people in a group. Look for, the, again, the bags. Look for the pillars. Look for the areas that will afford you some safety, stairs, escalators, fountains, those things are really great to know where they are. So you're leaving the mall. You're doing again the scan. And when you're leaving the mall, maybe somebody picked you up and they've been watching you. Turn around, check it out. If there's nobody watching you, that's fine. People love to just watch people go in and out of stores and buy a lot of stuff and then grab them in the parking lot. And believe me, it happens. You go in out the door, so take a scan. What's out there? Is there anything out there that could harm me or my family? If not, then go ahead. If they think there is, then go back in the store. Scan again. Continue to scan. Yeah, look behind you. Did somebody all of a sudden pick you up and they're going to follow you into the parking lot? This is safety. This is you preventing yourself from being a victim. Okay. Um, Let's just say we're in a um, movie theater. We come into a movie theater. I don't know if the ones in the back can see that. But you see this here, a backpack. It's just sitting there by itself. The day and age we live in now, we've got to question that. Why is that there? Okay. That's just a signal. You don't want to come here and just do this and not know who it, who it belongs to. Okay. Because what's happening across the world, country, in the United States, what's happening? see it and then walking away like that yeah. this happened in, it happened in Boston it just blew up <laughs> oh, we love That's so, up there. so that we have to be we have to be aware of that everything as far as self-defense and situational awareness is just being aware before something happens what do we see all the time people doing this here mm -hmm. all the time just think how vulnerable I could be like, like this here one shot and I'm done yeah shot like a punch or whatever yeah, I have some self-defense skills, but really, you could knock me out with one punch if you had to. Or, I, or I'd be fighting to catch, but to catch up. So you really want to be aware of, your, aware of your surroundings. The things we say, if you're followed, or if you, you want to walk with confidence. I always pick up my sister on this. A couple years ago, we were at the Burlington Mall, and we were, we were Christmas shopping, and she's power walking. I'm like, I can't keep up with you. I can't keep up with you. I referee college hockey and stuff, but I can't keep up with you. I always power walk. She walks. She's empowered. 
And obviously, you can tell if someone's following you. If you're moving like this here, you can tell. Whereas if you're just sauntering around like this here, with, with your phone, with your hand in your phone, or your, your head into your phone. Walk with confidence. If you're walking down the street and you see something that doesn't look right, cross the street, okay? I always say, if you see a hornet's nest, you're not going to stick your finger in the hornet's nest. It's nothing being, being um, chicken or being afraid by not crossing the street. You have to, you got to protect yourself, and a lot of it's just a preparation with that. If you're passing somebody, you can make eye contact with somebody. Certainly, you want to look back and make sure that person's not, fall, not, not following you. If the person's following you, kind of up to you. Some people say, are you following me? That's up to you if you want to do that or not. But certainly you want to notice the fact that that person's following you. Because what you, the one thing you don't want is that person that we said before to get behind, to get behind you. Yeah. Talk about it being alone. You're most vulnerable, obviously, when you're alone. But even in a group, you don't want a false sense of security because you're talking to each other or on your phone or whatever. So you don't want to have a false sense of security. And obviously, night time is worse than day a lot of times. Things, things seem to happen worse at night. So you just kind of want to think about that. You talk about the shopping mall, you come out. You want to come up into a wall lit area, you want to park your car and your vehicle into a wall a well lit area for that. If you see people hanging around, your vehicle, the path that you're going to go, size them up. I always say, you walk past somebody, you scan them, you scan them. What's his hands doing? He's doing something like this here, he's angling off. Charlie's going to talk more about that, the angling part. But he's angling off, to, what, why is he angling off to me for that? So you scan the person. If somebody's hanging around, don't go that way. Go back, go back inside. Because you don't know what they're up to. Talk about fighting back, which we'll, we're definitely getting to a later talk, and Charlie's going to take the lead on that. But if I'm being held up for some reason, now all else fails, give them the money. It's not worth it. Your life or your money. But the same token, our opinion is we don't want somebody to take, you don't want to be taken to another location. You want to be kidnapped, taken to another location. Nothing good comes out of that. At that point, you're going to fight for your life. You don't want to be taken to another location because nothing good comes out of that. Any thoughts or quick thoughts as I keep to move on? I've heard um, that ladies should not wear ponytails walking because they're easier to grab their hair. They definitely, from they, 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 they definitely are. I mean, from a law enforcement point, you see, we all get the shot here. If I have a problem with What's somebody, here? <laughs> what is here? <laughs> if I have, see somebody with the hair, I say, that's a gift as far as I have to deny myself, like you're saying. That's a, I did have hair in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> but you, if you do have the ponytail, just be aware, you're going to be aware of that, that that is something. And a lot of times, just don't have somebody getting behind you. Just you noticing that and being aware of that is, is a key point, too. Uh, obviously, we're not going to tell people to cut the hair, with, you know. But just if you're here in a ponytail and you're aware of it, that you have to be more aware of what's, who's close to you. Keep that three feet radius. So just knowing that is good. I'm going to hop into a video. We can start really into the, um, the active shooter part that we show a video. It may feel like just another day at the office. But occasionally, life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. But sometimes, bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. The warning signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The 
retirement plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. First and foremost, if you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate, even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you are out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, you need to find a place to hide. Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. Silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, if your life is at risk, whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight, act with aggression, improvise weapons, disarm him, and commit to taking the shooter down, no matter what. Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. Your actions can make a difference for your safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. You'll be able to follow along with the presentation with this, this sheet as well, be working off basically. Um, we have a question. Yes, sir. This seems to imply one shooter. What if there's more than one? One outside, one inside? It becomes, it becomes more complicated with that. You're going to have to do your best <coughs> to try and realize where the threat is. I mean, as we, with terrorism, sometimes it's, that's what sort of could be faced. Is that the more complicated they are, the more homework they do could be blocking the exits. So you're going to have to basically try and determine where the threat is so you're not running into the threat. And same when law enforcement survives, they're going to have to try and determine that also too. But the more that's yeah, more, it's, it's tougher. It's tougher. Yeah, I have a question. <coughs> if, some, if an active shooter comes into the home, is there some chemical like mace or something that can be thrown in the victim's 
shooting space. Yeah, mace or mace, mace, mace does work on what we call now is pepper spray. That's kind of the new, the new norm is, is pepper spray. Yeah, it works and it can work outside if you're attacked outside also. But we're going to actually lead into that as far as things you can do as far as to protect yourself if an active shooter came into the room or came into this room, came into this room. The mace is, pepper spray is, is a tool that you can, like you can use. A fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher too. Fire extinguisher, throwing stuff. And we're, we're going to actually show you different things that you can use as improvised weapons to protect yourself. Would you say it's statistically better to flee if you can, assuming there's one, <clears throat> as opposed to trying to stay in a lockdown? A absolutely. That's one of the things we're going to yeah. we're going to talk about is the absolute best thing to do is to get away from the threat. Distance is your th is your is your friend. So that's what we're talking about. The run is to is to get away. Distance is your friend. Yeah. I know First off, the, <coughs> the list of actions. Um, fight. You listed something that said commit to your action. Yes. Is that's very important, isn't it? Absolutely. If there is a threat, your life is in danger. You have to commit to. It. You can't just do it halfway. You have to make sure that threat is neutralized. So you, you, you're, you're saving your own life, your friend, your life's, the lives of the people with you. So that's what we're talking about, committing to that. So active shooter. As Charlie was saying, someone engaged in a confined or populated area. Generally, it's a confined area. Somebody, they're using it to your, their advantage. A building, such as this here, to their advantage. And it happens it happens very, very quickly. 10 to 15 minutes, it, it is over. If anybody thinks back, remembers back in Wakefield, the office shooting in Wakefield, kind of distancing yes. myself or aging myself, but I was on the tactical team at the time I responded to that. I was there under 15 minutes it was over. So that's when we say how quick something happens. It happens, it happens very, very quickly. So you have to mentally and physically prepare. Mentally prepared, commit to your actions. Okay, and physically prepared, and you can be, when I'm saying physically prepared, not being a weightlift or anything, but physically that is a group an active shooter, Charlie's going to get to more as far as teamwork, how to protect yourself as a team, too, also. Mm -hmm. Good practices. Be aware of your environment and possible dangers. Okay, you walk into, one of the things you want to do, walk into the building this afternoon here from the parking lot, mm -hmm. you really don't want to be down on your phone because you want to be aware of what's in front of you inside, inside the building. What's going on at the front desk? You know you're going to either check in the front desk or if you know where you're going, make your way upstairs. But you want to be looking around, what's going on? The meeting room off to the side there in the first level, you kind of want to make sure everything's okay there. Same thing when, actually when you first get out of your car and you're pulling into the parking lot, you want to be doing all that. And when you walk upstairs, you want to be aware of where the exits are. In this case here of the building here, okay, we know the door we came into also right here. It's an exit right here that goes through kind of a little, I call it a kitchenette, but a little storage room there. And then there's a big meeting room on the other side, we have the glass, kind of the glass areas there. So that can be an exit to go out there. Also, there's an emergency exit outside the door that the stairwell that drops all the way down, and you can get up, eventually get out to the back parking lot there. Other exits you can use if you have to. Like we said, you want to get away through those windows. Break those windows up with something. Chair, or whatever, the, the, the legs of the chair, break those up. You can lift them up without causing damage and just go out. All the better. It's a little bit lower. If you, out this way here to the parking lot because this parking lot here versus there just drops down so that can be a way to get out. The drapes there. Pull the drapes down, if one person can hold it, you can shimmy down to get out. But the key thing is you want to get away from the threat. You want to get, get away from the threat. So you want to know where the, the exits are. If you're in a restaurant, obviously the same thing I'm talking about. Front entrance, back entrance is marked as there. Another way you can get out is through the loading dock, through the kitchen. Because most of the time, most restaurants, they don't bring the produce in through the front door. There generally is some type of back door to go out to the back door. And in the kitchen, there's a lot of improvised weapons in that kitchen there. But you can just keep going right through to the loading dock and out and just, and just keep going. If you're in an office and you can't run, you can hide and secure the door. If that's your only option at that particular time. And this, if you're in a hallway, you want to get out of the, the hallway and into a door, into the hallway. Yeah. Um. The feedback is good, the questions are good, and we like that. And just to go back a little on this gentleman's question on if there's more than one, that's a good mindset to have because don't get tunneled in the idea there's only one shooter. There may be more. So our goal is try to get away, but be aware you may get away from this guy. As you exit, you may come across another person. So just 
don't have the idea once I get out this room, he's a shooter and you're safe. Because you may not be. So you still have to be aware until you get out. Okay? So that was a good question. And one of the things we want to talk about when you move up the program is when you get out, you want to keep going. If you think back several months ago, there was a shooting at the Congressional um, Congress of Baseball. They were practicing right. in Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. There's a video was floating around where an individual on their cell phone was filming it off to the side of the baseball field and he's going, oh, there he is, there's a shooter. You can, see, you can see the shooter and you can hear the noise and he's just standing there filming it. If you can see it, it can hurt you. Same with an explosive device. If you can see it, it can hurt you. So you got to evacuate. Just go, don't be that person sitting there just filming. You want to get, 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 get away, get out of the area. So as a last resort, what they're going to get into is take down, is take down the shooter as a last resort. Improvised weapons, we're going to talk about that a little bit as far as anything that could be in your office. What can be an improvised weapon? If I was to throw this over at Melina, what's she going to do? See? The okay. hand went up, right? It doesn't matter if I hit her or not. I might hit her with this here. Yeah, All the better. But what's <laughs> happening? It's a, it's a distraction. It's a distraction. So it could be anything. This here, a laptop computer, a stapler, anything can be an improvised weapon. There's scissors. It could be an improvised weapon. If you're in an office set setting, and you're a manager, or you have clients in your office, automatically they can look to you for direction. Just, just the kids are going to the parents for direction. So just if you're a manager, you want to be aware of that. We do go up to talk to say in the companies, teach managers and employees there. But if you're the person in charge, your employees and your clients are going to look to you automatically for a tour of Hey, run, fight, hide, the paradigm. It's in an order, one fight high, but it doesn't really matter in that order. Something can happen in such a way, all suddenly, all of a sudden, we're in fight. So it doesn't always go run, fight, high, fight. They can jump around with that. Have an escape plan or a path. You want to be thinking of that ahead of time, which way you're going to go. So if you're sitting in here, something happens, you want to think of what you're going to do. If you're in a movie theater, think. As the exit's there, something happens, I'm going to go to that exit. If I can't get to the exit, maybe I'm going to go someplace else. You know, all exit, the emergency exit. If you're thinking that in your, in your mind there, okay? If others don't want, you want to try and get everybody with you, but if they don't want to go, you're unfortunately going to have to leave somebody. Do what you can to help somebody if they're panicked or whatever. Do what you have to do to help, to help somebody also. Leave your belongings behind. You don't want to be carrying laptop computer. I know they're very, very valuable and everything, but the less you carry, the better, because the ultimate thing is just to, to get away, to, to get away. This is help over anybody else, if um, possible, and prevent people from entering the dangerous area. So once you go outside, and you kind of determine, okay, the threat is back in there, or something's going on back in there, you don't want people going past you inside. So talk to people, no, 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 we got a problem inside, we have an active shooter, whatever it is. You don't want people going back in there if you can help to prevent that. Okay, one thing you always want to do when you're going out, keep your hands visible, okay? Keep your hands visible because especially when law enforcement arrives or anybody else that's in the area there, you don't want to be mistaken as being the threat, being, being the person being the threat. Okay. When law enforcement arrives, follow the instructions of law enforcement. And whatever sa when it's safe to do, call 911, okay? That can help. That information that's feeding there is, is very, very valuable but you don't want to jeopardize yourself with calling and people hearing you, the bad person or whatever, the threat hearing you calling, or even at night, this thing's illuminated, you can see the jets off your face and they can see the illumination that somebody is there, somebody is there. Wounded people, uh, that's kind of a tough one. Actually, you want to help your coworkers and get them out. As you saw in the, the film, the law enforcement's duty is to go to the threat. To get to, to get to the threat. It's kind of hard as a human being to walk over somebody. I mean, we're friends. They're here. They run downstairs. We know each other. But we teach here all the time. We know each other. It'd be very hard for me to walk over and leave any of them there. Do that. Okay, so that's kind of a it's, a, it's a tough, it's a tough thing. Okay, hi. You want to be out of view of the, uh, you want to be out of view of the shooter. Um, we talk about cover and con concealment. You only need to know, the terminology doesn't really matter. What you need to know is that 
if you're hiding with si cover with something that's going to stop bullets, potentially stop bullets or fragments of an explosive device, something like a steel pillar, concrete pillar, something like that that's going to stop it. The engine block of a car versus the center part of the car where it's all kind of just aluminum or plastic. Um, concealment can be something where you're just hiding behind the drapes there, behind the shrubbery or the bushes. Bullets of things can go through, can go, threats can go through that. That's kind of what the difference is. So you want to know that if you're hiding behind concealment, well, if you can go with concealment for hiding something, but it can be short term. You want to look to get someplace else after that. If you still, if you're someplace behind that is cover that's solid, like a solid pillar or whatever, you still want to try and get away. I guess if distance is your friend, you still want to get away. But you're safe there maybe for a period of time from that. Um, the office, close the door, lock the door if you're in an office. And there's several ways you're talking about barricading the door, desks, chairs, and anything in front of the doors. One of the things you can do, a lot of these doors, they have the, um, the apparatus on the top. Maybe you can use a belt to kind of tie that off, maybe to, to try and um, delay somebody coming in. If it's if an apparatus is such visible to that, maybe even loop a belt around the doorknob so you're kind of holding it back. So this is, can you actually show it because this, this one is here, one of those doors where you can only open from the outside? Right. So this this one is tough, but you can't really wrap it around this thing, right? You can't really get that there. Your only option is door knob. It's, it's the door knob. Okay. And that being said, you get a glass window there, so you got to be put around the door knob. Be, be be cognizant of that. So this was the room we're in. He's going to put around the door knob, and you're going to pull it, lean it this way versus this way because you have the glass, yeah. right? So we have to be away from the glass. And if you're in the office, if there's more than one, we would do it like um, like you pull tug of war in the rope. Mm -hmm. You want to do it as a group and use your body weight to pull this so it makes it harder for them. I'll try not to ruin your belt. Makes it harder for them to open that door. Because when they go to open, they got to turn the knob this way, correct? So we're going to put it here so with body weight so it makes it harder to push that down. And then if they do get in, then we have to do the team approach like whatever weapons you have in there and distract them. Throwing cheers is good, fire signatures, pens, whatever you have in the room. And don't forget cheers are a good thing, especially in the office. Every office, every business has cheers, right? So. If you throw it, don't worry about hurting them. It's about saving your life, right? So whatever you have, you want to throw them pocketbooks, let them go, right? <laughs> whatever you have to distract them, and then we'll show you what to do a little later once they're distracted, how you can physically hurt them. So you want to block, blockade the door. Those big, heavy copy machines, it's kind of on wheels. It's hard to move. Great to put, great to put it there. It's going to it slow somebody down. Or impede their progress. I mean, we all come from different walks of life. I know a couple of retired firefighters, they're in the room here. You go to a fire scene, a fire, all that stuff, clutter is there, it slows you down, right? So anything just kind of slow, to slow, to slow them down, if, if necessary. You talk about silencing your phone, going on your phone, and not calling 911. The fight, you want to disrupt, disrupt, incapacitate. You want to act aggressively. Throw items, as Charlie was saying, Improvised weapons. You want to take the gun into the ground. Yelling and noise is good. Charlie's courses, he teaches, uses the word no. No means a lot of things. You're saying no, people look around. Why is that person saying no? But it also empowers you. You're doing no, it, empow it empowers you. So make, you can make noise too. You can make, sit, you're talking with Jim. Commit, commit, to your, commit to your actions. Okay, when law enforcement arrives, a couple of my fellow law enforcement <coughs> are here too, they'll, they'll tell you that it's it'd be utter confusion. I'm going to show you a film next, but you, it's utter confusion if something bad happens. So they could, be, they could arrive in teams, they could be solo, they, they're trained to go inside. What uniforms they're going to be wearing, it could be the regular police uniforms you see out on the cruise, or it could be tactical type uniforms that you see on TV, the SWAT team type of uniforms they could be on. Um, they could be using pepper spray, we talked about. We talked about pepper spray. They could use pepper spray because they need to use that to neutralize the threat. So you could get exposed to that inadvertently. Um, 
Flashbangs is a device that's used that makes a loud noise and just basically start and start and start. It could be shouting commands, it could be brought to the ground because a bad person could try to work his way in with the group and leave with the group. That could be a way of getting away. So I don't really know who is good, who's bad. I'm talking about 9 calling 911. Any information you give us is bad, is good. We still have to filter through it because. We've all heard about the situation. If I tell you something, we go all the way around the room, it can be different. It can be different. So we have to be aware of that. We're all aware that that could be the situation. So we can't take it as total because just because of that. Okay, how to react, keep calm, follow instructions, put, put items down, have your hands visible, <coughs> avoid quick type of sudden movements. One thing you don't want to do is hold on to it. Like you think you deserve to save me, don't hold on to the officer. Because it's like, no, plus it, it, the threat happens to be coming. Now you're tying, you're tying them up. In case of a weapon, you don't want to pick it up. For obvious reasons, you don't know, you may not be a weapons person. It may, you pick it up, you may cause it to, to go off. The other thing is, if you pick it up, somebody else over here says, oh, he's got a weapon, he, that's the bad guy. So you don't want to pick it up, leave it down. One of the things you can do, take a wastebasket, just put it over it. Okay? But you don't wanna you don't wanna you don't wanna pick it up. Touch information as you can to law enforcement. Location of the shooter, the number of shooters, we talked about multiple shooters, the number of shooters, that information is key as to how they're gonna react or respond. There's multiple people. So any information is is good. It, it is is good. Physical descriptions, the type of weapons. If you're able to recognize the type of weapons that it is, that's helpful. That's helpful too. The number of victims. How many people are hurt? Okay. Talk my five firefighter buddies in there. Here at some point we're gonna be going in together to get first aid to help people, and that's good. So they know call a mutual aid. How many they have to get in? How many additional help they have to call? across the other towns or whatever. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That's um, a lot to process, right? We threw a lot at you in a short window if we're on a little bit of time frame. But, but um, how about a little feedback? What you think about the video? Or did you pick up on the video that the guy was walking through with the shotgun? And he... How do, you, how do you it? even begin to deal with the fear? I mean, because you're, you see that and you become frozen. Yes. So how, what are your points in terms of dealing with the immediate fear for yourself? That's a great, great question. Everyone, I don't care who you are, first couple of minutes you're going to have that fear because you're going to have that, that just comes into you. And then unfortunately after that, after the fear and you, you freeze a little bit, then your training comes in. That's why these classes are important, because you need to be trained. You have to be showed what to do and what to do in that situation. If you don't have that training, then you just freeze and you don't know what to do, that's the worst you could be. Um, you do not want to freeze up. You want to know you have to escape, you have to run. That's the best thing you can do. But you could get over the fear, just you go into a plan. All right, first all of a sudden you hear the sounds, bang, 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 you're afraid, what's going on? Oh, I don't want them to get me. Now, how do I get out of here? That should be your first thought. How do I get out? How do I get away from the shooter? Instead of sitting there and I'm saying, he's, he's shooting, and we're gonna stand there and say, he's shooting, he's shooting, I'm staying here. Like the guy with the, uh, like Cleve said earlier, that was actually filming the softball, the center is playing softball, and he's filming the shooter. but. He's putting himself at risk, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, why show that video? Why, why stay there and film the guy? You want to get out. So you could overcome the fear. But it's, it's normal to be afraid. Because every, even, you know, if I was in a situation, I'll probably be afraid for at least a minute or two. Then my training is going to kick in. <coughs> all right? My called EAP system, emergency action plan, will kick in. And that is to get away. So that's good. Yes. For those of us who work in a smaller office setting, and it's not part of a greater office building, a branch office of a bank, 
limited options to hide, so there's really no running, no hiding. It really is just fighting. Fighting. Exactly. We're trying to barricade, but there may not be something you can barricade with, right? Right. There may not be. So that the only option, it, it jumps, unfortunately, right to, to fighting. It, it, jumps, it jumps right to fighting. Because like I said, even though we say run, hide, fight, it doesn't, don't think about it, it knows. It can go anyway. You really have to be prepared with people, yeah. people, yeah, be prepared to act with the action. And as you were saying earlier about the fear of it, it's one of the things we teach in our classes is repetition. Repetition over and over again. The drills, the self defense. We say you train like you fight, your father can train. So it's repetition. It becomes muscle memory. Okay, my law enforcement friends, we spent 26 weeks in the academy, right? Yeah. And whatever the drill instructors, over and over and over again, right? So it's muscle, it's muscle memory. So certain things you're going to do, it's just muscle memory. But the first time, unfortunately, something happens, yeah, you're going to say, wow, did it happen? is this really happening to me? And unfortunately, I've been in that position before being on the tactical team, where people have shot at us. I mean, didn't want to scare my family about that, never told my sister about that, because <laughs> didn't want to scare my family about it, but it's happened twice. And the first thing you're saying, wow, this is for real. <laughs> and then you, your training kicks, your training kicks in. So one thing that's really important to remember is we, we did not decide to do this program to make people paranoid and to scare you and to, you know, make you think you can't go to the mall. Um, we're doing this because, realistically, you can't control with other, what other people do, but you can control how you react and what you do in a situation. And so, again, we're not trying to scare you. And I'm watching this, Just and I'm like, educate. why am I Like, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm like, My kids are going in a bubble. They're being out of school. You know, but um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody keeps that in the back of their mind, that this does not mean, like, we're going to get shot up in the community center. It just means, please be aware of your situation. Unfortunately, Great the point. We That's why right. we it's done. the world that we live in now, and I hate to say it because I just brought two babies into this world, and it scares me. We were yeah. talking in the previous video about situation, situational awareness. I, when I was coming around <coughs> the side over here, I, I noticed that the door locked behind me. So I took a dry eraser and I put it in the door. Now, if someone comes in behind me, they look at that, they should know right off the bat that that's not supposed to be there. I mean, so when you're aware, and here's a little bit of interesting history. Everybody thinks that Woodward and Bernstein cracked Watergate. It wasn't it was a security guard at the Watergate building because the, the burglars who went in to, to do that were told to take the door so that the lock wouldn't go into the, the hole, you know? But they taped it this way. And the security guard that night was walking through and saw the tape on the door and went in and found it. They found the $100 bills in their pocket, they followed the security, the, social, the, the uh, serial numbers on the bills, and they traced it back to Howard Hunt. It was that, that's how quickly they were able to get the ball in motion. If somebody didn't notice that tape, Right there, Nixon would have finished his term. Uh, that situational awareness. It, 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 Go ahead, I get one more question. I'm just curious Thank you. with the, uh, when they were talking about the shooting, you can't always tell where the shooting is coming from. That right. got brought up in the recent one that yeah. you thought it was coming from outside and not inside. Right. Is there just a, a thought on that in terms of the sound that shoots, that shots make? And, you know, <coughs> we're sitting here and we're right. hearing one. Are we going to really right. know? Most of the time, right up front, you're going to know. Yeah. But what happens when it, when a shot is fired in, inside a building? Sometimes it echoes, so it echoes. So it could be coming from over there, but you might just hear a bang, right? So you don't know if it's over there or over here. So difference of inside shooting, outside shooting, you will be able to tell, but it does echo. You could tell the general area where the shot is being coming from. And one thing you know, if you hear it, you're close, right? Mm -hmm. You know you're close because you hear it. Uh, so that's that's there's no real secret or technique that I could say I could hear a gunshot in the hallway and say, okay, it's coming from the third row <laughs> yeah. to the left. Yeah. If someone tells you they could do that, they're lying. They, you can't do that. So you got to go with your best senses. You really do. Yeah, that's, not, that's, that's really all you can do with it. And as um, Nina and Jim were saying, I mean, that's why I started out with situational awareness, because that's really what you're going to be dealing with, is you have a more threat as far as maybe being attacked or mugged, something like that. That's why we say being aware in your everyday surroundings when you're driving down the road, things we talk about, 
teaching our class is about road rage, but just it's being aware of every, every race, everyday surroundings and getting on your farm. If you want to do by percentages or whatever, you say, what's the chance of getting into an aircraft accident? Pretty, pretty slim. What's the chance of getting into a situation where we're into a um, active, active shooter. shooter? Pretty slim. But it gets the big news right now mm -hmm. when it happens because it just everybody knows about it. Everybody knows. About it. I was going to say, I worked in a company once and we went over the active shooter and we had these alarm horns. They were like canisters. Mm -hmm. And you press them and it bellows a large sound throughout the entire building. The bullhorn. Yeah. So if there was an active shooter coming in here, mm -hmm. and people on the other side didn't know that, that horn would go to the other side, or else it comes over on the speaker. Right, right. No, that's anything like that to uh, to alert other people, your coworkers is good. One of the things we do is risk, risk and threat assessment, assessment. We go into corporations and look at the risk that they possibly could have, and we'll try to make them safe with it. One of the things Jim was talking about. This, the race at door kicked off. We call it piggyback. A lot of times, people have the fob keys or whatever. Somebody might not have the key, and you might let, okay, come on in, come on in. Hopefully, recognize that person. But leaving the, the door ajar like that, then anybody can, can go in. So we call it piggyback, and you kind of defeated the system by doing that, by leaving it, uh, by leaving it open. When they were in the group setting, and that woman was being loud and, and drawing attention, um, my initial reaction was to want to sh quiet her because she's drawing the shooter yeah. to yeah. you. Yeah. What do you do? Because I would want to maybe be aggressive to her because... Exactly what you have, yeah. to, exactly what you have to do <laughs> yeah. is to try and quiet that, com comfort that person, yeah. quiet yeah. that person down. Everybody reacts differently, so you have to try and comfort that person, whatever it takes to comfort that person, to quiet that person down. You talk to them, quiet, quiet them down. Going back to being aware of your surroundings, like carrying your key between your fingers. We teach, we teach that. Mm -hmm. If you're walking, you see someplace, know where you're going. I'm leaving a store, know my car is there. Don't be that person that's coming out, where's my car? <laughs> person hitting the key fob, I don't know where the key is. <laughs> know, know, know where you're going. But the keys in the hand there, that's an improvised weapon where you can use that to strike somebody if you have to. Especially Plus your keys are ready to get into your car. Okay. And your fob is there. Hit the alarm or whatever too. You're you're, you're prepared. Especially in the winter months, keys are a great defense because it's cold. Your skin's tight. So imagine a key going down someone's arm or across their face in the winter time when it's cold. You're gonna generate pain. Give you opportunity to go away. Can you want to show one last video of an actual situation that happened? An attack that happened. Against an active killer, your <coughs> best solution, if at all possible, is to run until you're out of range. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We're going to cover the video that we have here of the Fort Lauderdale active killer in the airport there. Because there are some important lessons here to learn about surviving the initial <coughs> ambush and about the paradigm for surviving an active killer of run, hide, fight. Just another day at the baggage carousel here, and you can see from the far left side, you can see this guy in this uh, turquoise blue shirt is now going to pull a gun and just start firing people at random. And, and we're going to listen in on a cell phone video of this in just a second, come back and learn some lessons. This is how fast it happens. <laughs> This one just makes me so angry. Please make sure to click through the link in the description to more lessons. There are eight of them on our website. Just think about some of the more important ones here. The first one is that you are always responsible for your self-defense, but there's not always something you can do. Because if you look at this guy right here, he doesn't look like a threat at this point. He doesn't, he's not showing any kind of, uh, you know, threatening gestures or anything like that, and his gun is concealed. We're going to see him draw that gun and push it out and take a shot. I don't think there's anything that that person could have done to keep from being shot. You know, you could talk about some super secret injury or whatever, but I don't think it's there. But everyone else now, you have to respond to that. You're going to see him take some shots, and, and, and now everybody, the second you start to see that, look at that shock wear off, and you've got to go find concealment. Cover is better, but concealment will work just as well here. 
to get out of the danger zone, run away from what's going on here to get at least 15 yards from the guy and to get behind some concealment so we can't see. And you can see here some people do okay at that. And you can see this, this couple that's behind the chairs or people that are diving behind the smart cart thing and others that are kind of out in the daylight there that they're down but they're not out of the way. Use your cover and concealment effectively. Next, when we see the cell phone video here, expect chaos from these kind of things and expect everyone to be in shock. We saw this woman here, you know, as he's kind of looking around, everybody's kind of trying to figure out what to do next. And this woman's talking about shell casings and those kind of things, and everyone's in shock. You got to be the one that maintains your awareness, that maintains a control of what's going on to get help where it's needed. And finally, as tragically terrible as it is, we see these people here who are in desperate need. We can see three people that are helping this one person, and then a lot of people standing around and doing nothing. So let me tell you folks, make sure you've got your first aid kit on you. Make sure that it's up to the task. You can carry a stout first aid kit on an airplane in your carry-on bag, even including trauma shears as long as they're less than four inches and don't have a, uh, a sharp tip. And make sure you have the skills and the tools with you so that you can help in the moment if you can. I don't think that the people that were shot could have really done a whole lot here to prevent it given everything that went down, but responding to it, getting out of the danger zone if you possibly can, getting this guy stopped, and then getting first aid to the people who need it until the first responders get here is incredibly, incredibly important. So let's make sure that we have the attitude, the skills, and the plan to do so so that we can cover our asthma. Okay, once again, you see people just kind of hang, hanging around. It's first responders, we're gonna help people. Any medical professionals here? Absolutely, nurses, doctors, whatever. We might lean to you because it's, that's your thing. You have first responders, a certain level of care, firefighters, high firefighters, other police officers here. You, but anybody can help. If I'm attending to somebody, you want to be in help, you can comfort the person. I could say, put, put pressure here, whatever. But don't be that person that's, you're not doing anything, you're just hanging around like that. Because we talked about secondary threats or whatever, or secondary person. Really, at that point, you don't really know what's coming next. You really don't. It could be explosive device, something else that's this plan. In this how case, was just one guy, person. How did they stop this guy? I don't remember. What I happened mean, I was... I remember seeing it, but I don't remember the end result. He just gave up. He gave, exactly. He gave up. What happened was he flew in from another aircraft, <laughs> claimed his luggage, firearm was in his luggage, went into the restroom, yeah. took it out, put it on his person, but you saw him walking down the area there. He ran out of bullets. He laid down on the ground and waited for law enforcement to arrive. Wow. That's what happened. That's basically what happened. That's, 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 how, that's how it ended. But if you're involved in that situation, do you really know <coughs> if there's other people involved okay. or the other threats there are? So by all means, help each other out, but don't be that person just standing there filming or just doing nothing. Mm -hmm. doing nothing. Um, everybody's aware of the Las Vegas? Shooting there, we talk about the run high fight. This is kind of like kind of what happened looking down at looking down at the helicopter. The stage is out front there, mm -hmm. and then you might have an entrance down below where you came in the entrance, and there's emergency exits. So, there's exits. So, if you're in there, if you're in a concert or open air like that, obviously you want to be aware of your exits are. Okay, another exit could possibly be through the stage if you had to get out that way there. So, what you had was somebody from elevated position shooting down. So, you can't fight them because it's too far away. There are videos out there of that, they're kind of graphic. I don't really want to show it, but people are just kind of huddled around, not doing anything, not escaping, because they're trying to say, where's the gunfire coming from? They don't know, you can't tell where it's coming from. And it could have been multiple at the time. You wouldn't know if it was multiple people. Were. So you gotta kind of do the best you can to figure out where it is, where it is. But what we like to say is, You want to run, you want to run, Hit, hitting a moving target is high. So when it's zigzag, you go, you want to get out of there. You just don't want to be huddled around. You want to create distance. Hide is a last resort. Unfortunately, if you're talking in this day and age, if there's a lull in gunfire, that might be the chance to, to run, to get, to get away, to get away. What could happen, the person's weapon could be jamming, or could be re reloading. But you want, you, want to, you want to get away. There's videos also from Vegas where Law enforcement's arriving, they're trying to determine where it is, and the people are just kind of hanging around. And they're saying, move back, move back. They thought they had got far enough back, but really, you gotta get out, you, you gotta get out of get out of you gotta get out of the area. Mm -hmm. 
We already did cover concealment, okay? Like I said, the terminology doesn't ma matter, but you need to realize if you're hiding beside something, that behind something that really can't protect you, that, that you gotta keep, you gotta keep moving. You gotta get out of the way. Um, can, communications and a plan. Let's say we're all in a movie theater together. Say the four of us go to the movies to get, together. Okay, a lot of movie theaters now, they get 10 theaters or whatever. So say we go together, we all drive together to the movie theater, the four of us or five of us. And you decide to go to the refreshment stand to get popcorn, you go someplace else to make a phone call, I may go to the restroom, all of a sudden the fire alarm goes off. Now all the movie theaters are emptying out. We're probably not gonna be able to find each other with all that. So we have to have a, you wanna have a plan, just a simple plan. If something happens, we're gonna meet at the car or we're gonna meet at the coffee shop beyond there. It's just the way of doing business nowadays, we just have to think that way and it, if you're separated. Something as clear, as simple, meet in the parking lot by the cars, you might not be able to get to there, but move beyond that. But just something to think about because that could realistically happen if you're in a movie theater with your kids or whatever and you get separated for no thought of, other than a fire alarm going off or unfortunately maybe being a fire or whatever. Good. Any thoughts? Yeah, no, that's a good idea. So I have a question. Yes. Speaking of the keys, <laughs> I just bought a car and I don't need to get the key out of my purse to unlock the car. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in that situation where you're actually not holding the key anymore? Because you have the you have you have the key fob you, you have the key fob. Yes. Uh, so all she has to do is pull pull, pull a right. door. Oh, pull the Op open a door. Oh, she, like I have my keys in my pocket. Yeah. You open your car. Because when you're in the range of the car, it's 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 going to open. So you're not going to be able to use it as a right. as a defensive weapon because of that. Unless you carry something else in addition to that. We talk about improvised weapons. A pen's a, a pen. Mm -hmm. You can defend key. yourself with a pen. Do you have a house key? Uh, or just yeah, you say a house key. <laughs> yeah, a, 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 it's just a house not intuitive to have the house key yeah, on, the, on, 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 on there. Yeah. Most, most what I recommend from the mall situation, going to your car with woman anyway, is the pocketbook. It's a great tool, and that's always handy. You always have it, right? Yeah. Most new cars a whistle on the keys. Get a whistle. A whistle. A whistle. They they whistle. Did a yeah. you a whistle. Yes. But most new cars now will allow you to program your, your doors to lock once you get in. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have those, it's always important to make sure because if, if you get in the car and all the doors are unlocked mm -hmm. and you're running from something and they're behind you, they can actually open the door. If you get in the front door, they get in the back door. Exactly. So one of the things that I do is just make sure when you get into the car, particularly if you're in a parking garage and I'm like in the inner city, we're from Lexington out here, but you get into Boston and you're in an area you don't know. First thing you do when you get in the car is lock the doors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so yeah. the and something to think about with, the, with those key fobs, obviously if you're in range of that, you're going to be able to open the door. Let's say you go to the gas station or whatever, right? And you're pumping your gas. The normal thing would be to lock your doors because you want somebody coming around. People, thieves go around the other side and grab phones, laptops, pocketbooks, whatever. But if you're within range, the car's going to be able to open it. Same thing, say you decide to go inside to get a coffee or whatever. If you're still within that range, whatever it's going to be, your car is literally still open. Just something to think about. Other thoughts? Yeah, that's good. Uh, what I like to do, question. What would, you made a suggestion I didn't hear for women in the mall. When they walk in out to the car, if she doesn't have her keys out because she doesn't need them to be out, she could just open her car door like just yeah. pulling it. I recommend using pocketbooks as a weapon. If okay. all of a sudden he's a threat, he gets hit with a pocketbook, you're going to be able to distract him. Mm -hmm. Fall with other things. I'll show you one. But um, pocketbooks are a great tool to have. Okay. All right. So what I like to do is um, a couple of things. What I'll do is um, show you some basic techniques um, that you'll be able to use. And, and one thing you always have with you, she said sometimes she doesn't have her keys out because they're in the pocketbook and she doesn't need them. But one thing you have with you is yourself. You have your body. So you have to learn how to use your body to protect yourself, right? It'd be nice to travel in groups of four and fives but a lot of time today we're by ourselves. So you may be in a one-on-one -on -one situation, okay? It doesn't mean you can't survive that situation. It means that you just have to fight and protect you.
the more techniques you have, more options you have, raises your um, opportunity and, and chances to survive that situation. All right. Uh, what I like to do, where's this going? It's going on YouTube. <laughs> so some <laughs> things, but certain things I don't. What I like to do now is if I could have this front row just stand up and move your chair a little back so we get a little bit of room because I want to, you know what, everyone stand up where you are. Could you stand up where you are? This is called flexibility. All right, now, I'm doing it this way so everyone get the feel. Now, if, if you can, right, from where you are, just put one leg in back, one leg in front. Yeah, I don't care if you put your right leg back or left. But you could do that, right, even in the small space we have right here. And bring your hands up. Face me so you can see what, what I'm doing, okay? Now, just this alone, what am I telling you? Stop. You're too close, right? Right? He does this to me, I'm too close to him, right? You can still talk, verbalize here. Say, hey, buddy, you're too close, what's going on here, right? Now, this is obviously not with a gun, okay? This is just a physical threat without a weapon, all right? Because if he has a weapon, he's going to talk differently. This is without a weapon at this time, all right? We'll get into the weapon in a minute. Put your hands up. Let them know they're too close. Hey, buddy, what's going on? What's going on? What you want? You want direction? I don't know you. What's going on here? Right? Um, if I do this, what does that mean? Does this mean I'm a nice guy? <laughs> what do I want to do to you right now? I'm ready to punch. Did I have to tell anyone that? Okay. Common sense tells you someone makes a fist. He makes a fist at me. That's a threat to me. Right? I can still verbalize. I want to create distance if I can. But if we're in small quarters where he could touch me, right, I can't step back. I have to protect myself right now. Now, I'll just clear one thing up. In a situation like that, if he's close enough to me to strike me, right, he could touch me, and I have no way out but to fight, I don't have to wait till he punches me to start protecting myself. I see this tight fist. I'm in fear he's going to hurt me. I could strike this person. You don't have to wait till someone hits you. If you have to have that fear, I just can't walk up to him and hit him for no reason. Then what am I? I'm a bully, right? I'm wrong. If I just walk up and hit him, I can't do that. However, if he throws a threat to me, show me fists, we're close quarters where he could touch me, I'm in fear, I can strike him. I do not have to wait for him to hit me. Okay? You have the right to protect yourself. So, we're in the fist. Now, what I wanted you to do while you were all stand up, right? Um, what I like as a distraction is nice and simple. I love the palm heel strike because your hands are up here and they're so common. Now, could you extend your hand out without hitting your partner in front of you? Strike this way to me. There you go. I'd rather take the hit than someone else. <laughs> All right? So palms are very, I'm already here at the ready, giving them distance, right? Telling them back off and they don't. They're close quarters. I like the palm heel strike. Fire that shot right to the nose, if you can. Between the chest works. Now, where else could you fire that palm? I, I have a, I'm going to pick you because you're closest one to me. <laughs> I don't even know him, but I, I'm not mad at you or anything. Am I going to be on the front No, page no, no, no. So I have the face shot. My second option is center chest. My third option is the midsection. Another option I have is his groin. Right? I could fire that strike here. Right? Whatever you could reach, that's what you hit. If they're tall, you can't reach the face, so the face shots out, right? Could you hit their stomach? Could you punch their stomach? Do a palm heel to the stomach? Could you close fist to the stomach? Right? Think of your options. What do you have? Now, what I like to do is I'm going to start rotating. I'm going to have you hit a target, which gives you a taste what a palm heel strike feels like. And then I'll, I'll give you a knee strike, because I like knee strikes, especially close quarters. Because most of the time, if someone wants to get physical with you, hold your fists up to me. 
He's thinking right now he's in charge, right? He's not thinking about me striking him. He's thinking about connecting to me, right? He's trying to hurt me, right? He's not thinking about me firing back. So you see that? His hands, his eyes are most likely going to be up at your face level here. So what's that? Bang, right? How is he going to block that, all right? Knees are very hard to block unless you train for it. But if you, he shows me fist, I throw a strike here, and bang. How long does that take? How long does that take? Seconds. Seconds, Seconds right? And he's not expecting it. I'm, it's not like I'm going to say, hey, he makes a fist at me. Make a fist. Hey, I'm going to hit you with my right hand and give you a knee strike. <laughs> right? It's not going to be like that, right? You're going to react, all right? Questions on that? Uh, it, it, you, have, you have weapons. You have this. Charlie, it just, I noticed when you were talking about spreading your legs, is that to give you strength when you're moving forward? Great question. <laughs> uh, come on up. You retire school teachers, right? Warren. Warren, Warren. It's not, I like to know the name before That's I right. hit them. All right. All right. <laughs> By having one leg in front and one leg, put that little further. Now, by this, he could rock. See, I move his shoulder, it just goes there. You have balance. This gives you balance. If you stand here, and I'll let you push me, I have no choice but go back. I have no balance if my feet together and someone pushes you, you're going back. If I have one foot separate, my legs are separated, one in front, one in back, I have balance. He pushed me, pushed my shoulder. I could rock. Push. I rock, right? <laughs> right? I can rock and recover. But in here, <laughs> I go backwards. I land on my butt, so for the professional work, I have others, but I'll say that. But um, hey, did you see that, um, that um, road rage on TV a couple weeks ago when a woman got out of her car yeah. and she approached yeah. another car, a guy in his car? He got out and pushed her. Yeah. What happened to that lady? She went flying backwards, right? Yeah. Know why? She approached his car like this. She's standing here. Okay, so she went backwards, all right? That's why. Um, let's, since I'm getting a look to hurry uh, up. No, I just want to let you know this is only part of their yes, class. Yes, yes. So this if you want to know more, yes. sign up for their classes. Information's right here. And I'm not trying to kick you out. Relax. All right, I got 10 minutes. I'm going to use all 10 because I, I like this stuff. What I like to do is let me get a line. You're filming this way. Line in front of my target. This face me. Start with the first roll. Come on, I'll let you go first. Warren's training. And everyone stand behind him. All right, stand behind him. Now, put one foot in front, one foot in back. Now, what I want you to do. Bring your hand up. You're at the ready. You're, you, I'm too close to this, so you give me a warning. He wants to go right to fight. Put your phone <laughs> right Now, we have verbal, will you talk to me, say get back, whatever, and I don't move, right? So you come up with the thought you're in fear and you have to strike. You have to protect yourself, mm -hmm. right? What I want you to do, bring your fingers like that. This palm right here, that's a palm strike. I'll use it on my body first. Because I learned from training, I'll take the chest shots, but don't give up the nose. That's why it's big. <laughs> 20 years ago, I would have gave you that. But I don't know you yet. All right? So what you're going to do, you're going to do that strike, but you're going to hit this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like that. Like that. And to do that, all you have to do is push your arm out and bring it back. The reason I bring it back is once that strikes out, if you leave that, he could grab you. Right? By you bringing it back, guess what? You get to strike me again, mm -hmm. and again, and again. You like that, right? <laughs> All right? So, only thing I'll add when you strike to alert others, I want you to yell no. What that's going to do, that's going to give you breathing, help you breathe, and alerts others, right? If someone's striking, I hear someone saying no as they strike, I know something's wrong. If I'm in the vicinity, if I'm in the area, I'm going to come help you, right? Um, all right, so I'll be, I'll hold this because I'm crazy. 
I want you to strike right there. Now, what I'm going to do to help this, and that, and help motivate you to strike, I'm going to yell ready. When I say ready, you hit this target. All right? I'll give you two hits, then you got to go because I got to get to others. All right? <laughs> all right. Ready? No. Nice. Put no. it straight. Die. He took his two and he's saying one ready. All right, Warren, you go over there. One ready, one strike. Come on. <laughs> you can do that. See, that's what I want to hear. I can't do that, right? So maybe you never hit anything before, right? So this, this is good. I like people like you. Put that foot device back. Now, let me help you since you can't do this. This right here is your palm, right? You're going to shoot it out, right? Now, when you strike the target, I want you to push your arm straight out like that, okay? All right? The advantage you have is nothing's coming back at you, all right? I want you to give it a nice yell. You have kids? Yes. Two. You ever tell them no? <laughs> Many times. <laughs> you yell no when you strike, all right? Like <laughs> no, no, yeah, I don't, I don't want to know that part. But I believe in discipline. But anyway. <laughs> all right? Push it straight. I'll hit my hand for a second. Hit my hand. Nice. Take a step back. All right. She's just too close to me. I, I see out my corner. I, I get nervous. Ready? No. No. She can't do that. She can't do that. <laughs>